want it, you need to book it early because it's so popular, it's sold out when? We let the tickets go for the summer blast in February. By March 1st, the campsites were gone. everyone this is a, another episode of send it atv podcast today i have a great guest and i'm actually in a unique location um, this individual has a very unique skill set and a background that made basically made all this happen uh, i am your host shane eastman and today i'd like to introduce gary haluska who is the chairman of the board of rock run recreation area and is in uh, just outside of Patton, pennsylvania and uh, this place, if you have not been here, you need to come check it out. It is phenomenal. The work that they've put in uh, starting in around 2006 has been monumental for what has changed here in a very short period of time. If you look around, 15 years seems like a long time, but the amount of work that has been completed since then is phenomenal. Thanks for uh, taking some time to talk to me today. I appreciate you coming and, and checking this out. It's amazing that we've been here now 15 years and we still find people that don't know about us live within 30 miles of us. <laughs> you know, it's hard to believe, but you know, that happens. And uh, you're here today, Sean's here today to the, uh, uh, what we call the Summer Blast, which was started by Brian Fisher when he had his TV show. He came here and basically had the Fisher reunion for five or six years. And then as he moved on to Kentucky or Tennessee or wherever he went, he left it down. So he figured, well, that's a nice event. So we'll keep it once. So we changed the name, called it the Summer Blast and took over and it's our biggest event of the year. And we get over 3000 people here. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I just happened to find you on the internet doing uh, a search for ATV fe uh, festival and stuff. And, uh, and just from what I saw is I knew I had to come check this out. Yeah. And uh, for the people that you know live within an hour of this place, I am incredibly jealous because of the resource that you have here uh, is absolutely phenomenal. Yes, it's uh, a, a 6,000 acre parcel of land which we were able to obtain through help from our Department of Conservation and Natural Resources with the ATV Snowmobile Fund money. Uh, we purchased the property and started to build it up, trails, the building that you're in now, and all the outbuildings that we have, our maintenance facility, um, we're building a band shell, permanent band shell this year. Um, you know, we built a shower house last year. We put in 18 electrified campsites. We put in a shower house down in the lower parking lot along with restrooms. So it's been an ongoing, you know, thing. And, and we, for this weekend, we have primitive camping here. Most of our camping is primitive. We have over 350 sites and they're all sold out. So uh, we have a lot of people here and uh, they're having fun and uh, we're family oriented basically we try to keep it you know fun for families and yeah, truly really and truly from everything i've seen so far is there is something for everyone from i've seen people children as young as seven years old on their own machine riding around on the great trails for them to incredibly highly technical trails that uh, you might want to question your skill set before you try attempting. There are some <laughs> nasty ones. We maintain them uh, when uh, it, it does get uh, the guys and the dozers and the skid steers and that sort of pucker their cheeks to the seat because they are steep. But that's what some people want. Mm -hmm. They want to test their skills and other people want nice easy riding, which we have, you know, green, blue and black trails, just like a ski area. Mm -hmm. and, uh, basically, you can put you in all the signs on the trails are either you know green blue or black so they know what they're getting into before you know they get on the trail yeah and the signage is fantastic um and really and it's not like it's just a little bit of each one of those there is a lot yeah. of each one of those skill sets we have approximately 150 miles of trails plus i think there's about 30 miles of single track for dirt bike Plus, we have the uh, service roads that the uh, uh, mining operation used, which we use today to connect to our trails and stuff. So mm -hmm. there's probably 17, 20 miles of those roads. And you see a lot of people just run back and forth on the roads. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
it's good. And we have six different campsites uh, uh, located in this corner of the property near the visitor center. Uh, so it makes it nice. Um, you know, you can spread out. Some people like to be in the far away campground, which is over half a mile away from the visitor center. They're sequestered down there by themselves. And then other people like to be right up here in Saddleback, which is you know a big campground up here <laughs> where they're right in the middle of everything. So you know it's kind of a, a mix. Right, right. If you want seclusion, you can get it. If yeah. you want to be in the mix of everything else, you can absolutely get that too. Right, right. And uh, but with that being said, if you want it, you need to book it early because it's so popular. It's sold out when we let the tickets go for the summer blast in February. By March first, the campsites were gone. They were sold out. So uh, it's become a, an event that people come back year after year because they meet another group of people mm -hmm. and then they start to, you know, hey, we're going to be back next year. Yeah, make sure you get that site next to us. So, mm -hmm. you know, we get a lot of returning people and then we get people bring new people. So it, it's been a, a really, really good event. And then in September, the last week in September, we started another little called Rally at the Rock. That's like our end of summer deal because we closed November the 1st. Yeah. So it's grown and grown and grown each year. And the park manager and his wife basically have created this thing. We have a scavenger hunt that year. We've done everything from fire trucks to dump trucks to all kinds of turtles and different things. They get these little miniature things and they hide them all over the property and they have numbers on them and some of them are worth prizes. People go bonkers. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen women make their husbands strip down to their underwear and get in the water because they see one floating somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but they, they love it. Oh. And, uh, they already have it picked up this year, what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And then they, during that, we have what we call a night ride. We get everybody together and get one big line and go for a, a ride at night. And it's like a snake going down over the hill. And we get 80, 90, 100 you know, vehicles in a row, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they all follow each other on a night ride, and people really enjoy that too. That's so we fantastic. try to find things to make it enjoyable for people, you know, mm -hmm. to come rather than just you know other than riding, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it works out really well. Right. Well, let's talk about Summer Blast. I mean, this event is incredibly successful. It's uh, it's, it's been very successful. In the first few years, Polaris was our major sponsor. Since then, they have sort of dropped off. They had some issues with their corporation that Yamaha stepped up to the plate. Mm -hmm. Now Kawasaki is here. They're bringing uh, you know, tractor trailers and they have their demo vehicles where you can go over, sign up, and they'll take you on a guided you know, trail ride you know, with their new vehicles so you can test drive before you buy. Yeah. So that's been really successful. And then we have some of the people from communities around us that have businesses that are here selling merchandise, um, you know, obviously ATVs and everything else. Mm -hmm. And the Air National Guard's here this year, and the ladies here paint pe people's fingernails. <laughs> so, and then there's the axe throwers. Right. So, uh, and then we have concerts on Friday night and Saturday night for the people. And we have a huge field over there by the stage, and people just come from the campgrounds and bring their ATVs up, sit in their ATVs and listen to the concert. So yeah. it's, it's worked out well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it has been a complete blast. I mean, we're not even halfway through the event and right. it's just, right. I've already felt like I've got my money's worth, yeah. and which is pretty fantastic. Now, out of curiosity, to plan a successful event like this, when do you start playing? Do you start basically start no. playing right now? Oh, right. Yeah, oh, yeah. So. We, we talk to the manufacturers, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I said, the two manufacturers are here. Pat <coughs> Leo is uh, the vice chairman, and Pat tries to handle that part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has some real good contacts in the industry. So he'll be talking, you know, to Kawasaki. He'll be talking to Yamaha. Are you guys interested next year? Uh, usually they say yes. You know, we mm -hmm. want to come back because they get a real good rapport, you know, with the people and the dealers in the area. So. Yeah. Uh, more manufacturers, the better. I mean, you know, they, they have a place to show their product. Nothing like being able to take a side-by-side, -side, a dirt bike, mm -hmm. or a quad, or a sport quad, and go out and ride it before you, you know, the same model that you're going to buy, mm -hmm. you know, and ride it in real 
turns, not on the parking lot. Right, you can right. actually take it out on the trail and ride. And, and really, uh, both Yamaha and Kawasaki yesterday let me put it through its paces, and it was pretty fantastic. You, and, oh, you did do that? Yeah, yeah. Right. And, uh, Would that know, help you if you were somebody that was looking for a vehicle that you could actually go and Well, ride? honestly, it's changing my mind. Oh, it is? I'm a Can-Am guy okay. and a Polaris guy, but after riding Kawasaki's unit, and actually, I even own Yamaha too. Yeah. But after riding Kawasaki's unit yesterday, I had so much fun doing it. Uh -huh. It was like, okay, I'm gonna really take a harder look at okay. it when it comes time to buy side by side. That's so it. that's basically what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, getting out there and promote your product. Right. But uh, yeah, it's. And I think it's worked for them. It's worked for us. Um, you know, and I, like I said, you know, it's it, it's been good for us every year. This is our biggest event. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, we have uh, we have. We started with nothing. When we started this, other than the decent our money to build the facility, as far as the business end, we went to the Cambridge County Business Alliance, borrowed $50,000 so we could buy furniture, a computer, we built our own desk out there and everything. Yeah. So, and we paid that back in two years, mm -hmm. and we are self-sufficient. We started with nothing, and we've, we've done well, but that's because of the good people we have and the board of directors that we have we're pretty frugal on where we spend money mm -hmm. and DCR has been very good to us applying for grants you know for our dozer our uh, skid steer uh, our excavator mm -hmm. you know our uh, we had to buy you know, of course some trucks and stuff our own but that equipment you know really helps if we yeah. can get some help purchasing some of that equipment because big numbers you know that's hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment but you need that to maintain trails yeah. And Especially this many. <laughs> no, no, yeah, uh, you, you ride trails, you know, I mean, it's just, it just takes a lot of work to maintain them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's, that's just the way the nature of the business is. So, uh, yeah, we've been, we've been fortunate that we have a good group of people. Um, we're willing to put that extra effort in to make it good. And like you can see just mowing here, you know, with the entranceway, that 15 acres where the stage is and everything, plus all the campsites, you know, we probably have... 30, 40 acres of grass that we know when you add it all up. You know? yeah. So that keeps the guys busy, especially this year, because it's grown like crazy mm -hmm. with all the wet weather we've had. Yeah, it's been uh, phenomenal for if you want rain, right. you've gotten it. So. And next year, uh, we of course want to finish our stage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that'll be next year and get our power run up to it. And then we're putting a, uh, similar to the state parks, a portable toilet system, not portable, I guess, but uh, a, I guess you would call it a vault type system okay. out on the other end of the property so people have a place that they can hit the restroom out there rather than drive the whole way back here. Right. So we're always thinking of things, mm -hmm. you know, the shower house has been a real godsend, uh, you know, because for the first 12 years, you couldn't get a shower here. Yeah. Now, if you get down there at the end of the day, you'll see the line, you mm -hmm. know, because people can actually get a shower and go back to their camp. You know, yeah. so that's worked out really well. Yeah, that's so just little by little. We just yeah. keep, you know, trying to make it a better place, a better place, a better place. So, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll always come up with something we need. Well, too, you know, the, the, what I found interesting was that your entity is nonprofit. So every dime that's spent here stays here. Well, and insurance is the big kicker. When we started this, for our liability insurance, we paid $6,000 a year. Mm -hmm. This spring, we had to write a check out for $34,000 for the same insurance. Mm -hmm. And they want it up front, no payments. Mm -hmm. So that's really scary when you have to spend that much money for liability insurance. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, but there's very few people that write it. And uh, Ryder is who, out of Chicago, I think, is who we have to go with mm -hmm. to get the insurance. And that's a big chunk of your profit, right? Yeah, you know, right off the top. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, being a nonprofit, it really helps because there's nobody taking money out of the park other than paying our insurances, our wages, our taxes that we have to pay on, you know, the different things we buy and stuff. Yeah. So it uh, really helps. And largely the staff is volunteer. The, uh, we have four part people that are retired that come out and work part time and mm -hmm. they're only making less than twelve, fourteen dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. But it's just a little part time job for them, a park manager, a secretary. Um, so yeah, we're flying probably as lean as you can fly and still keep the place running. Right, right. And you know, you, it's 
Yeah. I just can't get over how amazing it is here. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you got a chance to come see us. And like I said, we're still finding people, but the majority of our people come from Eastern Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland, uh, Jersey. If you go out in the parking lot, you'll see a ton of Maryland plates. Even on a regular weekend, mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of uh, Maryland plates, Jersey plates, West Virginia, Ohio, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was talking to a gentleman yesterday. He got home. He lives six and a half hours away in, up in New York. He came home from second shift. He hurried up, got a shower, got here at three thirty in the morning, waiting for the gates to open. <laughs> now that's dedication. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, sleeping in his camper when he got here for a couple hours. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's amazing. We open at eight, but they're here at six in the morning waiting to get in mm -hmm. for this event. And so when we check people in, it takes us to about one o'clock in the afternoon to get everybody in and get them situated. Mm -hmm. but we've uh, done a lot of things. A couple of the young guys on our board are computer savvy and they've done a great thing with the computer where you can do all your check-in stuff online and when you get here, all oh, they take their pad out and they have an order number, they punch it in. Oh, I see your campsite so-and-so, you have your tickets, sign your waivers here and you're on your way. Yeah. So uh, you know, yeah. And we're really, the two things that are insurance, you must have helmets on. Mm -hmm. That's one thing the insurance companies mandatory mm -hmm. that when you're out riding you have a helmet on and sign a waiver yeah you know, so we're really that's the two things we're really strict on you know so yeah we try to enforce that as much as we and can to me it's a no-brainer because a helmet saved my life once upon yeah. a time so well i mean yeah. and and you have to try to tell people unless you buckle that helmet it's really not going to work because <laughs> if you hit something it's going to fly off your head so it's a learning experience. And right. we, do, we do training here at least once a year, youth training. And that's the, one of the biggest things you know, that we try to tell them. Put your helmet on, make sure it's strapped on, you know, buckle it up, because if you're gonna be bouncing around, and then some people, well, I'm in a side-by-side, -side, I don't need a helmet. You're even worse there, because when you roll over, guess what, your head's gonna bang off all those bars in there. Mm -hmm. you know? So you really gotta wear a helmet. And that's what happened to me, as I had a high-speed rollover. And the roll cage actually failed, uh -huh. and it created a point which hit on the side of my head. And if I wasn't wearing a helmet, you and I wouldn't be talking right yeah, now. Yeah, you're probably right. So, you're probably right. Um, so, but uh, what is a good way for people to look you up? Facebook, you know, online, or yeah, we're on Facebook, um, Rock Run Recreation and Court Inc., and uh, it'll pop up, uh, and uh, you know, you can get our homepage. And you can you know see everything that's going on, okay. and uh, we're closed Mondays and Tuesdays, and they go why? <laughs> well, our staff sort of has to have a couple of days off, <laughs> so and then the, uh, we're closed November the first of November. We'll have a Toys for Tots ride. We've had it every year, okay. and people have been great. We get boatloads of toys, and we you know take them to people that you know are distributed and mm -hmm. need them. And we're closed November. We open up April first. And people say from the Baltimore area, say, why aren't you open in the winter? Well, you wouldn't want to be here in the winter. <laughs> because if you see the pillars out front, that's the size of snow piles up <laughs> sometimes. But uh, yeah, it'd get, get real nasty up here in the winter. Okay. You wouldn't be able to find your way. Right, but, right. Uh, so that's, that's our season. Um, you know, we've learned our season, we learned our riders, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, that's, the, that's, that's how we've operated going on 15 years now. We were talking about our season, yeah, yeah. you know, what, what the season really yeah. is, and, you yeah. know, uh, so it's, it's, it's worked out for us. That's great. Well, again, everyone, if you have a chance to come and check this place out, it's, you get out of these trails and you look like you're alone in some of the areas, and you've got these big, massive, expansive trails, yeah. uh, something to definitely at least check out, put on your bucket list to get out here and check it out. Again, Gary, thank you so much oh, for your welcome. time, and, uh, I'll see you uh, next time. Remember, keep rubber side down.